it was in uh, typewriter correction fluid. It was in your cup of Senka. It was in carpet cleaners, gun cleaners. Um, it's been used by painters, embalmers, anesthetists, uh, mechanics, metal workers, soil into your home, your school, your kids' schools, and your workplaces, and you never know about it. And for years, you breathe it in, and uh, years later, you're uh, possibly developing Parkinson's. You know, where, where did this come from, trichloroethylene? Um, so uh, this is it. Uh, this is trichloroethylene. It's a really simple molecule. It's Describe got, what I'm looking at. It's uh, it's got this is a, a, a chemical structure of six atoms. So just to give you a flavor for those who don't like chemistry. Water H2O has three atoms. Trichloroethylene has six atoms. It's got two uh, carbon atoms here in black for those who can see it. One hydrogen atom in white, and then three chlorine atoms in green. Hence its name, trichloroethylene. Uh, perchloroethylene, the other chemical that uh, we wrote about is just additional chlorine atom. It's got four chlorine atoms. The chemical in East Palestine, Ohio, that trail accident, train accident, is vinyl chloride. It just has one uh, chlorine atom and three hydrogen atoms. So they're all very similar. Uh, trichloroethylene, or TCE, was first uh, synthesized in 1864 and been, as you alluded to, been used uh, commercial production since the 1920s. Uh, so this is a known carcinogen. It causes cancer, just like vinyl chloride is a known carcinogen. It causes cancer. And um, perchloroethylene is a probable uh, carcinogen. You know, is there a big company behind this? Or is this like, because you, th you think of Roundup, you think of like, there's usually like a big product line, but this seems to be more like almost B2B. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, well, consumers uh, used to use it. Lots of you are consuming products. So think like, especially in the 1970s, degreasing, you know, those cans that, you know, spray and all of a sudden the, the grease melts away. Uh, that was TC. And it's like a great industrial solvent. So people have been exposed to, I told you, typewriter correction fluid. I told you, uh, thank up because that that's known. And I use that. Coffee. I use the degreasers. I, I mean, um, like, yes. think about all the TCE in my lifetime that I, it was so convenient that it's, Yes, but most of the two uses that are in the, uh, permitted in the, in the United States today are vapor degreasing, uh, it heated up and it degreases anything. If you think of metal, if you want to paint metal, the first thing you do, with, well, I'm, not a, I'm not a mechanic, but you have to get rid of grease on uh, metal before you paint it, otherwise the, the paint uh, doesn't stick. And then um, spot dry cleaning, those are the two things, but use is uh, really high. Uh, the EPA, um, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, uh, said that uh, trichloroethylene poses an unreasonable risk to human health. TCE poses an unreasonable risk to human health. And in December of last year, they reached that exact same conclusion for perchloroethylene. The hope, um, not yet realized, is that this will lead to stricter regulatory action and hopefully a ban on this century old chemical that has uh, caused cancer for generations. With this paper, what are you hoping to, to achieve? Uh, we're hoping to get onto the uh, Larry Gisford's podcast. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you need to dream bigger. Uh, we had to dream bigger. I, I think we can ban it. Listen, the uh, EPA Administrator Michael Regan uh, came out with this finding in, in January uh, 2023. Uh, TCE contaminates Delaware, uh, President Biden's a home state, there are contaminated sites uh, there. Why can't we ban this chemical? Why we, can't we create a world where childhood leukemia is extremely rare? Why can't we get rid of multiple myeloma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, brain cancers, um, liver cancers, kidney cancers? Um, why can't we uh, decrease the number of people who will ever develop Parkinson's disease? Why can't we create a future generation where Parkinson's disease is increasingly rare, not increasingly common? I wanna go back to the plume, the plumes of this, um, I guess it's not a gas. What, what, what do we call it? It's a, is it? It's, I, I call it like an underground river. And these plumes are huge. So there's one in Long Island from a, an aerospace uh, manufacturer. You can just Google uh, Long Island uh, trichloroethylene uh, Newsday did a great report. And it's four by two miles. Oh, my gosh. Four by two miles. And so you're and it's just top. sort of like a, like a cloud under the ground? Yeah, like a cloud, like an underground cloud of TCE and PCE that's evaporating. And homes, schools and workplaces have like negative pressure. So there's a gas, right? It needs to come up to the surface, right? So it's less dense than the liquid. And the homes have negative pressure relative to the atmosphere around it. So they suck it in. And you can think like an elevator almost acts like a syringe and draws in 
the chemicals and it comes in through cracks in the foundations or sewer lines or utility lines or whatever have you. And it gets in just like radon does and you breathe it and you don't know. So it's like, you know, you don't even know you're inhaling this chemical. You have no idea. And then you develop Parkinson's disease 30 years later. Just like you. I mean, you didn't like know. You no, know, I didn't know no. about TCE or Paraquat or any of that stuff. I just, you, you, you just assume that if it's, it's being regulated by the government, you trust. So I, I said that I've said this before. I used to trust that the food I eat, the water I drink, and the air I breathe is safe. I, I no longer have that assumption. You, you, who, that's, so say that again. I used to think uh, that the food I eat, uh, the water I drink, and, and the air I breathe is safe. Uh, I, I no longer have that assumption. And, you know, I'm a relatively wealthy doctor hanging out in suburban Rochester, you know, and I don't think that. Um, you know, so what about people who have way less resources than I do? Uh, what are they being exposed to? When can we take the question mark off your statement, an invisible cause of Parkinson's disease? I, I think it is very likely. Now, I'm ahead. My colleagues would argue with me, and uh, the, the science isn't there. I told you if you do a uh, you search the library of medicine, there are 26 total articles on trichloroethylene and Parkinson's disease. And that's unconscionable, I think. And that's really a flexion, I think, on the research community and, and funders that we're not paying attention to things that we should know about. I mean, Carly Tanner and Sam Goldman uh, at UC San Francisco uh, 10 years ago said that did a twin study and looked at twins who had hobby or work exposure to uh, TCE versus those who didn't. And they had a 500% increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. There are very, 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 very few things that are associated with a 500% increased risk of Parkinson's disease. Quite frankly, I can't think of any. Ray, I, we, we, we owe you. Um, thank you for all your work and your dedication to this because it's important stuff. When Larry Gifford calls, I answer every single time uh, <laughs> because it's the, it is the PD Avengers more than any other group, more than any other group that, that stand the chance of changing the course of the trajectory of Parkinson's disease. And all I'm going to do is arm you with anything and anything that you need uh, to change the course of it because it's people who are most directly affected by the disease are the most effective spokespeople for it. We know that from Michael J. Fox when he testified to Congress, I think 20 plus years ago. We know that with Davis Finney. We know that with Brian Grant, a call to Brian Grant, who is profiled in our paper because he was a three-year-old boy at the Marine base Camp Lejeune when it was contaminated with TCE. 30 years later, Brian Grant, a three-year-old boy because he was there with his father who was a Marine, develops Parkinson's disease. His father later dies from esophageal cancer uh, tied uh, to Parkinson's disease. So people like you, Brian Grant, Davis Finney, Kathy Amy Lindbergh, Michael J. Fox, are changing the course of uh, Parkinson's disease, and I'm delighted and honored to help in any way. Ray, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks very much, Larry.